This is a tutorial that I'm actually pretty excited about. This effect is really the epitome of the parallax scrolling effect where we've got a foreground and a background and they're not moving the same way because they're in two different places in space and that's what the parallax effect is all about. So in this example when I scroll down we've got this iPhone a hand holding an iPhone that's moving in front of an out of focus picture and as we move across you can see the image in focus on the iPhone screen. I love this effect. I think it is the coolest thing. Uh, by having that background out of focus, the foreground really pops. And as we scroll across, I mean, this effect is pretty striking. And uh, it's a lot easier than it looks to pull off. So I'm going to head back to the Finder real quick so I can show you guys what our resources look like here. Uh, the first step is to have a big blurry version of your picture. Uh, of course you want to start with an in focus version and throw it into Photoshop or something like that to make it blurry because you will also need an in focus version. Uh, but essentially you need a big enough version to fill the entire browser or, or the entire display. And if you're designing for the rest of the world who's on multiple size displays, you'll want to make sure this image is pretty big. Now keep in mind, not all of the math is going to work out the same on my machine as it is on yours at home. Uh, and the reason for that is that I have everything turned down for these tutorials. I have my screen set at close to a quarter of its normal resolution, so that way everything's big and easy for everyone to see. Uh, so I've got this set at 1400 pixels wide, which would not be wide enough for uh, an, a 27-inch iMac or a large display like that. Uh, nor is it tall enough to fill an entire 1080p display because it is shy of 1080 uh, vertical lines of resolution at 934. So ignore my math. You want your picture to be bigger than this. And then the little guy, you want the little one to be the height of the iPhone screen in your design. So you'll probably want to go and create your page first before sizing this image. Uh, so that way you can take a look at how big your iPhone ends up being. Uh, in your design. So let me go back to Muse. I'm going to close my example here. I'm going to head back to Muse and I'm going to go to my unprepared version where I've just got the graphic elements dropped on the page. And just so you guys know, these images that we're looking at here, uh, these images are not images dropped on the page. They're shapes. They're rectangles. So if you want this guy to be the full browser width and you want this little guy over here to have a moving image in it, it has to be a rectangle. You can't just go drop the picture right on there. So create a rectangle and then choose fill and then set an image fill of the appropriate image. So this big rectangle, all I'm doing is creating it big enough to fill the approximate height of the screen uh, and wide enough so that it snaps to the edges here so that it's a 100% page width item. I don't want to go past the edge. I don't want to go shy of the edge. I want to be on the edge and it'll snap. Once I've done that, now I've got this little guy over here, and this one just needs to be the size of the iPhone screen. Nothing real tricky there. It just needs to be the size of the iPhone screen, and it needs to be filled with a small version of the image. But the small version of the image will need to be uh, the appropriate size. And again, that appropriate size is that the image is at least the height of the screen. You want it to be approximately uh, the height of the screen, if not exactly the height of the screen. And once you've done that, it will be too wide to fit on the screen. And that's the width that gives us the wiggle room to have the parallax effect. So this won't work with an image that's in a portrait orientation. It has to be kind of a wide image. I would say, as a rule of thumb, make sure your image is close to twice as wide as it is tall, if that makes any sense. Now once you've got it in there, uh, the background image, uh, you can choose how you want that to fit. In my case, my image doesn't fit perfectly the way I want it when it's top anchored or center anchored, I decided to bottom anchor it. But uh, that'll depend on how tall your image is and how tall of a computer screen you're designing for. Uh, but my screen is not the size of your screen. Every screen's different. So I also created a big brown box down here. And this brown box gives me a place to put the bottom of the hand. And this hand, by the way, uh, I didn't create this. This is not my hand. Uh, you can find it on the internet if you Google uh, iPhone holding hand. I know that sounds backwards. It, you would think it would be phone holding I, or hand holding iPhone, but it's iPhone holding hand. Uh, you'll find this image pretty quickly on uh, on Google. So the the hand with the iPhone 
that's just a PNG file. That's a PNG file that I have sitting in this folder here, and uh, it's there's nothing special there. That's not in a box. I just dropped the image right onto the page. That's just a regular old image. So this is a box with an image fill. This is a box with an image fill, but the hand is just an image dropped on the page. Uh, now again, you can anchor this guy, the big one, the big blurry one, however you want, however you think looks best. But this one here, you want to make sure that the fill is an anchored to the opposite side of where you're moving toward. So I've got it anchored to the right hand side, so it starts with the right hand side of the image because as the phone moves to the left, I need to reveal the left hand side of the image. So uh, if I have it centered, I'm wasting space on the right, and if I have it set to the left, then I'm going to immediately reach the edge of the image the moment we start moving to the left. So if you've got your hand on the left, moving toward the right, you want it to be anchored to the left so you have room to move toward the right. Since I'm starting with the hand on the right, I want it to be anchored on the right because that's my starting point. So now that I've got that all set, I'm going to select these two and I'm going to scoot them uh, further to the edge. And I'm going to go even further because I want it to start uh, a ways to the right so that we have plenty of space to move left. Now here's where our math is going to differ, but uh, if you look here, we're about 800 to 850 pixels uh, from the right side. So I need to make sure that I have scrolling room because it's the act of scrolling that's going to make this hand move to the left. So if my page is too short, we won't be able to scroll, and if we can't scroll, we can't parallax. So you've got to add a bunch of blank empty space down here at the bottom of your page. And I did so in such a way that if I scroll to the bottom, you can see here toward the top, I'm at 850. So I have room because this is 850 pixels over. So if you're 1200 pixels over, you want to make sure that when you scroll to the bottom, you're at about 1200 pixels down. So I'd have to stretch this out if that were the case for me, uh, which it's not. But I've got a giant brown box here that's occupying that space and no one should see it because what we're going to do now is we're going to select our background and we're going to go over to scroll effects. Now this is for the box. This isn't for the content inside the box, but because the content is inside the box, it's going to affect both. So we want to turn on scroll motion and we want it to scroll vertically at a speed of zero and we want it to scroll horizontally, not at all. So if you're set at 100% page width like you're supposed to be, it should be grayed out. So it's not going to move side to side at all. Uh, the other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your key position is set at zero pixels. So for the background image, we're looking at all zeros for scroll effects. Uh, and that, again, that's the motion tab of scroll effects. We're going to do the same thing for the brown box down here, which doesn't have to be brown uh, and it really doesn't have to exist. I just want it to be a mask in case someone's on a taller screen so we don't see the bottom of this hand because this, this arm doesn't go on forever. That is the bottom of the image that I downloaded from the internet. So for this guy, you want to do the same thing. Motion turned on, you want to be at zero, zero, zero. We want it to not move and we want it to be positioned where it is uh, relative to the top. Uh, and, and again, if you guys aren't too familiar with the key position, when you're working with a speed of zero, the key position determines uh, essentially how far from the top will this object be. So if I have it way down here and I don't have this set at zero, then it might not be way down here. If I've got the key position set to be way down here, close to the box, this is going to be this far from the top of the browser. However long this red line is, that's how close this is going to be to the top of the browser. So you want to make sure the key position is set at zero so that the top of the browser means the top of the page. That's exactly what you want to do. Now for the hand, the hand's going to be a little bit more complicated, but not much. We want to turn on motion for the hand on scroll effects, and we want that to be set at a key position of zero. And this guy is going to move up and down at zero. So initial motion and final motion should be set to zero for the vertical boxes. And then the side to side is going to scroll at a speed of one. Because like I said, it's 800 pixels to the right. And once we scroll 800 pixels, it will move all the way to the left. So that's one, one to one ratio. Therefore, one times is the appropriate number here. And just make sure you don't have the direction reversed. You want to make sure if you're going from right to left that the direction is set to go from right to left. So once you've got that established, you can come down to your rectangle filled with the screen image. And if you haven't done that already, just head back over to fill and set that image of the screen. And uh, 
th this part's going to get a little crazy. I'm going to throw the math at you guys. I'm going to tell you guys why we are doing this the way we're doing this. If you don't like math, please plug your ears for a few seconds because this is going to get a little crazy. Now, I mentioned that this is 800 pixels over. Yours may not be 800 pixels over, so you may want to redo this math for yourself because the numbers that I pop into the scroll effects panel might be different for you, and this kind of reveals how you figure it out for yourself. So this is 850 pixels over, so I'm, I'm going to have a movement of approximately 850 pixels because that's how tall the page is as well. Now when that movement takes place, I've got to make sure that this image doesn't slide too far. I've also got to make sure that it slides far enough that I'll be able to see this tomato that's back here and these flowers that are back here. So I've got to make sure that this works out mathematically. Now that's going to happen because the width of the screen is smaller than the width of the image. So you've got to kind of figure out the difference between the width of the screen and the width of the image. So that way you can figure out how many extra pixels you have to move across. So transform is going to show me here that this box, in my case, is only 127 pixels wide. Let's just round it for the sake of easy math. We'll say it's 125. Now if I go back to the finder and I look at my image, my image is 375 pixels wide. Now that gives us a difference, if I'm not mistaken, of 250. We'll pull up the calculator here to be sure. So my box is 125, and then I'm going to subtract from that the 375 that is the image, and that gives me a difference of 250. So that difference of 250, what does that mean? That's how much extra space we have to move across. So how are we going to move 250 pixels? How are we going to tell Muse that we want the background image to move exactly 250 pixels? Well, we have to figure out what the speed multiplier would be to have the 850 pixels of scrolling divide into the 250 pixels of extra image. And again, if you don't like math, you can ignore all of this. You could totally wing it and figure it out for yourself without using any math. Uh, that's how I did it. I didn't figure out the math until after I had accomplished it. So let's do the math there. We've got 850 pixels of scrolling to do, and we have to divide that into 250 pixels of extra space. So 250 divided by 850 gives us a speed 0.29, which is 0.29 times. And in this case, we could round it to 0.3. In my case, I rounded it down so that way I wouldn't reach the edge. And I decided to go to scroll effects and set the horizontal motion uh, of the fill to be 0.25. But um, whatever your calculator gives you should be just about right. So we know that we need the image to, to move at 0.25, uh, or if we want to be precise, 0.29. I'm just going to round it, keep it simple. So when I come back in here and I select this box, uh, you'll notice I have motion turned on. I do want my key position again to be zero. I want zero for everything. I want no vertical scrolling. So the vertical for initial and final are both going to be zero. And then for my horizontal scroll, it's going to be one times. Now you guys might be thinking, why do we do all that math if it says one times? The box is going to move at one times because it has to follow the screen, which is attached to the hand. All of that is going to move across at one time. It's the fill that we're going to employ that math that we just did. So just make sure the box is going across at one time and make sure it's going the right direction. That takes care of the box. Now let's head over to the fill for the box. And we got to go over to the scroll tab of the fill. And we have to turn on motion. And it's here that we're able to say how the content inside the box is going to move. Because the image inside the box has to move at a different speed than the box. And there's my 0.25, which again, if I want to follow the calculator exactly, I could set to 0.29, but I'm going to leave it at a slightly lower number just so I have a little wiggle room to not reach the edge of the image. So that 0.25, I'm going to stick with that. And then scroll motion vertically is going to be at a speed of one. And uh, again, our key position's at zero for all this stuff. Um, and key position is not super important most of the time when you have an initial motion and a final motion as the same number. Uh, but in this case, because we have uh, fixed verticals, uh, we do need to make sure that the scroll position, or that the key position rather, is set to zero. So double check that all your key positions are set to zero. So my vertical scroll motion is set to one. That might sound weird because I don't want it to scroll vertically. I want it to, to just kind of stay put and scroll only horizontally. Uh, the reason it's set at one is because it's 
scrolling at a speed of 1 relative to the box. It's scrolling at normal speed relative to the box, and the box is set to 0. Uh, imagine being on a bus, and the bus is going 50 miles an hour, and you walk toward the front of the bus at 2 miles an hour. Technically, you're now going 52 miles an hour. Uh, so if you want this to go at one times the speed of the carrier, which is the box, then it won't move at all because the carrier is going to go zero. And one times zero, you guessed it, it is zero. So it's only the horizontal that you have to worry about. Uh, leave the vertical at one times. So the horizontal is going to go to the right. That image is going to slowly move to the right as the box and the iPhone move to the left. So that's going to happen at 0.25 in my example, and again, yours might be different. So it looks like we're good here as well. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to preview it in the browser, and let's see what we've ended up with. There you have it. Looks beautiful. Goes to and fro very nicely. It's very fluid. It runs really, really well because, really, it's just an image with a box and a fill, and they're moving at slightly different speeds. The background image is just hanging out. That brown box underneath is just hanging out. So it's very low load on the browser. It runs really smooth, really nice. Um, good luck with the math. I know it's a little bit tricky, but watch this video several times if you have trouble with the math uh, or, or just rewind and replay that, that math part so that you guys don't pull your hair out because uh, it does get a little, a little crazy. So if you guys like this tutorial and you haven't subscribed already, please do subscribe. I've got plenty more cool stuff coming soon.